With my Seattle Seahawks only getting three primetime games, it made me really want to break down the NFL primetime games and pretty much see how many each team has and explain if it makes sense to me or not. I'm going to just start with the teams below the Seahawks. The Seahawks have three primetime games, like I mentioned, and there's four teams that have zero. Those four teams are the Houston Texans, the Atlanta Falcons, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Indianapolis Colts. Now, those all make sense. While all those teams were drafting early in the draft for a reason, they still don't seem like a team that's going to take a huge step to be a prime time type of team. While the Texans got a quarterback and CJ Stroud and the Colts got Anthony Richardson, these guys aren't the Trevor Lawrence type of draft picks where you might want to give them at least one prime time game to start the year just in case because you think it's going to be something super special they're probably a year away from having primetime games. The Falcons are also a team that's rebuilding. Their draft pick was a running back, and they're just not ready to be a team that anyone's going to be interested in, in all honesty. And then the Arizona Cardinals. New coaching staff, J.J. Watt retired. Buda Baker pretty much wants out. DeAndre Hopkins might want out. Kyler Murray's not even playing maybe the entire year, maybe half the year. We don't know. There's no reason to give them a primetime game. And thankfully, as a Seahawks fan, that means we're going to have two easy wins hopefully they're usually easy but i'm just saying they might be easy again and then with one primetime game is the washington commanders now i'm surprised only because they're such a huge market it's washington dc but they just haven't been good I and mean, there's no way around it they were almost better with taylor heineke than they were with carson Wentz, and it's just so confusing ever since the rg3 injury they haven't been relevant for so many years I think they got one primetime game because they are Washington, D.C., um, new ownership coming now, and it's just a big city. Otherwise, there's no reason for them to even have a primetime game, so they got one. I don't even know who it's against, but it's probably one against the Cowboys or the Eagles, and some big name. I'm guessing that's what it is. And then all the other teams below the Seahawks with two primetime games make sense. The Los Angeles Rams, we don't even know if Matt Stafford's healthy, but it's Los Angeles, so they gave him two. The Carolina Panthers have two. Another team that they have Bryce Young, the number one pick. That's probably why they got those two picks. Otherwise, they'd have zero. The Tennessee Titans, they have Derrick Henry. They have a young quarterback now in Will Levi. So we'll see what happens there. The Cleveland Browns, also kind of just an organization that gets games. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with two. I'm actually surprised. I thought they might have less. But at least Baker Mayfield is a quarterback, which causes some interest. But after losing Tom Brady, you're going to go from that five or six primetime game schedule to the two primetime games. Um, and it might get even worse next year. If Baker Mayfield doesn't work out and he's not a very good quarterback for them, it might turn into zero primetime games the next following year because they might be drafting in the top five. And now we get to the part where the Seahawks are at. Three primetime games for the year. I'm going to start by talking about, before I get to the teams that have more, four games, five games, six games, Seahawks are literally in the middle of the pack, but even below the middle of the pack. I'm going to talk about the teams that also have three primetime games and why I'm surprised we're in this bunch. Now, this is no offense to the New Orleans Saints, the Jacksonville Jaguars, or the Miami Dolphins, but those are the teams that we're stacked with. The Saints are not a very exciting team. Yes, they got Derek Carr, and yes, they have an Alvin Kamara on their team, and there's some interesting pieces, but they're not that interesting of a team in general. You would think the Seahawks get more primetime games than them. The Jacksonville Jaguars, obviously, they had an awesome comeback in the playoffs. They have Trevor Lawrence. I'm not very surprised that they're sitting there at three, but I think the quality of the team in the city of Jacksonville, where it's located and probably not having many fans outside of Jacksonville, is the reason why Jacksonville is stuck there at the three-game mark. Otherwise, if you're Trevor Lawrence and he was on the Bears or any other team, to be honest. If Trevor Lawrence was not on Jacksonville and any other team that's in a decently large city, they would probably have four or five primetime games, even if they're not that good. And then the other one I'm shocked about is the Miami Dolphins. They're sitting in there at three with the Seahawks. They have Tua, Tyreek Hill. They have Jalen Waddle. They have a lot of exciting pieces, and it's the city of Miami, and they're getting better every single year. Maybe due to all the concussion things with Tua last year, that you know maybe their just fan interest became less. They didn't people didn't maybe like that they threw them back out on the field. Maybe people don't believe in them being good this year because they don't know what's going to come out of all this. But I'm surprised that they were just at three because they were one of the more exciting teams the first half of the year last year 
with exciting Mike McDaniel, who was probably like the fan favorite coach of the year last year, and Tyreek Hill, you would think this team probably got some more shine. And now to our Seattle Seahawks. Three games is extremely low, in my opinion. I am shocked that they literally only got three primetime games. Geno Smith, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith and Jigba. You have Kenneth Walker. You've picked up Kenny McIntosh, Zach Charbonnet, different people on the offense that are going to make this team better. And then on the defensive side, not only do you have all pros type of players, Jamal Adams, Tariq Woolen, Quandre Diggs, Bobby Wagner, and now you're picking up more pieces in the offseason with Devin Witherspoon on the defensive end, and you're only going to get better on the defensive line of Draymond Jones and some of the draft picks we've made. I'm very shocked that this team, who made the playoffs, is not getting more primetime games when they're about to take a next step, and they potentially might be a 10 or 11, 12 win team potentially. It's very shocking. Now I'm going to start with the list at the four spot. The teams that have four primetime games, one more than the Seahawks. And I'm going to let you know if I'm surprised or not surprised. Detroit Lions, surprised. I know the Detroit Lions are a fun story of Dan Campbell and it's the city of Detroit and the Lions are a big name. They're obviously going to get their Thanksgiving primetime game, but they're the team that the Seahawks made the playoffs over last year. So I'm very surprised that they get more games than the Seahawks. Chicago Bears, surprised and not surprised. The Seattle Seahawks are a better football team. They're a more exciting football team. And quite frankly, despite Chicago being one of the biggest brands in football, they've been a joke for 20 years. And I still think that the Seahawks should get more games in them, but I'm not surprised because of the Chicago Bears. Denver Broncos, surprised. Russell Wilson was there last year. This team gave us the fifth pick in the draft by winning four or five games. I don't expect them to be that much better. Yeah, they got Sean Payton, but what are they going to do? Go from a four-win team that didn't get that much better and become a 12-win team? That one is the most shocking one to me so far is the Denver Broncos having more games than the Seahawks. The Ravens and the Bengals, not shocking. Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, division rivals those probably that's definitely one of the primetime games is them against each other two young stars lamar jackson and joe burrow that the nfl is pushing and making sure that they are in your face that they are one of your people so i am not surprised about that at all new england patriots slightly surprised huge brand name for the nfl but are they going to be good are they going to get any better are they going to be very a team that people care about I don't know. Mac Jones is not very good. There's a lot of teams. That just, there are a lot of people that just aren't good on that team that I don't think they're going to be anything special. So it's shocking to me that they end up sitting there at the four spot. And then you have at the four spot also the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not very surprised. And I'll tell you why. I'm not surprised because it's Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin, they haven't had a losing season in, what, 15 years. Kenny Pickett looked pretty good last year. They're probably only going to get better. So that one I'm not surprised about. Now to the five games, five primetime games. New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers, not surprised. Now is it shocking that just Aaron Rodgers gets you two more than the Seahawks? Now the Jets were probably a two primetime game. Now there are five, but that's what Aaron Rodgers does. New York Giants, I thought they'd be less. I know it's New York also, but I thought they'd be more where the Seahawks are at. If the Seahawks were at three primetime game team, I think the Giants kind of fit in that spot also, but it is New York. Green Bay Packers, kind of a similar situation. Big name, but now it's Jordan Love instead of Aaron Rodgers. We don't even know if they're going to be good. Five primetime games, a lot of primetime games for a team where we're not sure if they're going to be extremely competitive or not. So I'm surprised that they got two more primetime games than the Seahawks, but it's the Green Bay brand, I guess. Green Bay it is. And before I get to the other two teams, there's four teams left with uh, with five primetime games. There's two of them that are obvious why they did it. Five primetime games for the Philadelphia Eagles. If the Eagles are even bad, they might get more primetime games than the Seahawks because it's Philadelphia and it's the Eagles, one of the biggest brands in football. Not surprised. I'm surprised that they're actually not on the top of the list with six primetime games um, with the other teams up there because they're, te- they're a team that just went to the Super Bowl in their Philadelphia. And you also have the San Francisco 49ers at five games. That one... They're such a big brand. I think they should be more on the four level. I think they should be at the exact level of the Seahawks, probably four primetime games. We don't know if it's Trey Lance or Brock Purdy. We don't know what they're going to do. Their stars are going to be next year. Their star quarterback specifically. They're in a tricky situation. They're always good. They're going to be good because that's what the 49ers do. They just end up being good. It's frustrating as a Seahawks fan, but they're going to be good. 
and they're a huge brand. But five primetime games, not even knowing who the starting quarterback is going to be for a lot of them, feels like a lot. Now, the two teams where if you told me we flip-flopped the Seahawks at three games and gave them five and put these t- two teams at the three level, I wouldn't have been surprised. So I'm shocked they're at five. The Las Vegas Raiders. Jimmy Garoppolo on the Raiders. I mean, last year with Derek Carr, they were bad. I don't know if they're going to be any better. They might be okay, but with with Jimmy Garoppolo, it's not going to make that much of a difference. Five primetime games for a team that might win six games is shocking to me. So I'm not sure how the Raiders got five primetime games other than being the Las Vegas Raiders. It's Las Vegas. It's the Raiders. I get it. But that doesn't always mean you're going to get crapped out of primetime games. Like I mentioned, the Chicago Bears have four. They know they're bad, but they're the Bears. Or the Washington Commanders have one, but they know they're going to be bad. The Raiders got a lot of primetime games, five, for a team that we might not know if they're good. And the other team at five that I think it's way too many is the Minnesota Vikings. Don't get me wrong. I think they're going to be a good team. I think they're going to probably lose five games next year, and those five games will probably be the five primetime games because that, that's what Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings do. They're going to be 12-5 and five with their five losses being the primetime games, which is exactly why it's shocking to me that they were able to pick up five primetime games. The Vikings are a big brand, yes. But do you know how many teams I've said are a big brand? There's a lot of big brands in the NFL. The Bears, the Lions, the Cowboys, the Bills, the Raiders, the Eagles, the 49ers, the Jets. There's a lot of big brands. There's a lot of football teams that have been around for a long time. So they're going to have a big brand. But for the Vikings to get more than the Seattle Seahawks, we know Kirk Cousins is going to fail in big games. We know that they're probably going to be just as good as the Seahawks, probably around the same record. To give them five when we know they're bad at primetime games too is just quite shocking to me. And last but not least, there's four teams with six primetime games and three of them I agree with and one I'm a little confused. You have the Chiefs, defending champions, two-time Super Bowl champs in the last three, four years. Totally understandable for six primetime games. Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, Buffalo, the one team that, one or two teams that's going to compete with the Chiefs in the uh, AFC with the Bengals, the Bills, Ravens. They're all going to compete with the Chiefs, maybe the Jets, maybe. But that's why the Bills are there. Everyone likes Bills Mafia. And then six for the Cowboys. Once again, the big brand, they are the brand. They're America's team, whatever you want to call them, even though I don't really think they're America's team, like in my head, but they are America's team, right? The Cowboys having six makes sense. I'm not going to argue that the Seahawks should have six or should be anywhere near the Chiefs, Bills, or Cowboys as much as I love my Seahawks. They just don't fit in that spot. But this one's a doozy for me. I know they have Justin Herbert. I know they're in Los Angeles. But the Chargers, the team that doesn't really have any fans, the team that is sharing a stadium and people tend to put them as the second tier. They are like the Clippers to the Los Angeles Lakers. They are the Clippers to the Rams um, in L.A. And they have Justin Herbert. But I definitely thought the Los Angeles Chargers, even with Justin Herbert, would probably be at the same range as a team like the Seahawks. I think the Seahawks should be at that four or five level over the three. But, you know, I would assume the NFL gets... I'm not a rating. I don't check the ratings every single week. But watching Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson on the Ravens and Bengals, despite the cities, I would think it's just as good viewership as an L.A. team because it's Justin Herbert, who's a little more quiet personality. I'm just shocked that... You have guys like Aaron Rodgers in New York that got less games than the Chargers or the Eagles and Jalen Hurts that got less games than the Chargers. Not many people care about the Chargers. They don't have any fans. It's weird. It's an interesting situation. It is what it is, though. The Seahawks at three primetime games feels low, but I'm excited to shock the world again. We're always a little bit of underdogs, and that's the way I like it. So go Hawks.